Welcome to Gracefully Grading. I'm your host, attorney Henry Gornbein. Please go to our Gracefully Grain YouTube channel and also visit and like our Gracefully Grain website at gracefullygrain.com. Today on Gracefully Grain, I am very pleased to welcome as my guest, Mary Schmidt Smith, who has been a guest in the past and is a partner at Lipson Nielsen as we discuss the issue of Medicare coverage issues and options. Mary, welcome. Thank you, Henry. It's always a pleasure to have you. First of all, why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about your background and areas of specialization? Well, I've been an attorney for hmm, a good 40 years at this point, happily so, uh, practicing mostly actually on Long Lake Road. Um, but my background and my specialty is planning for people who have disabilities and seniors. Uh, my husband and I have three children. Our son, two of our sons had, were born with some special needs. So I learned all about those and therefore the benefit programs that are available. And then uh, thereafter, I decided might as well continue this for the more senior population. I became a certified elder law attorney, uh, first one in Michigan, happy to say that uh, when we had to take tests by handwriting and blue books, I was able to make that work. Uh, so I've been practicing in that area for a number of years. Um, I initially got into this, Henry, if you're gonna ask me that, uh, by remembering well when my grandmother was in a nursing home, someone stole her wedding ring. And I remember my parents were outraged. I, we were all outraged how awful it is. These people need some help. And so that was another part of my driving advocacy. Mm -hmm. Let's start with a description of what Medicare is, Mary. Well, that's a big topic, Henry, but many people know it as the federal health insurance program. Uh, it is designed for uh, individuals who've made some contribution to the social security system. Generally, that means U.S. citizens and perhaps people with green cards as well. Um, and it is patterned after employer provided insurance so that it has deductibles and it has co-pays and it's, it's a whole new arrangement for many people. On the other hand, those who have been fortunate enough to have employer provided insurance at least have some framework for how this program works. Uh, it's not designed to pay for every expense. It's designed to pay for reasonable and necessary medical expenses. And uh, it has a number of categories in terms of coverage. Mary, how does it differ from Medicaid? Ah, very good question. Uh, important to understand that Medicare is the program that you get when the government takes care of you. I'm trying to show my arms here, my hands. Um, they take care of you because you've earned it. It is an entitlement program. And that is to be contrasted and compared to Medicaid, which is a needs-based program designed for people who are blind, elderly, disabled, and poor. So if you have financial aid or you need financial aid, you're probably talking about Medicaid eligibility. And that's a that's a different separate uh, health insurance program. Tell us about the options in Medicare. Well, we can start with the alphabet. Uh, and many people know there's the A, B, C, a little bit different and D. So the options include uh, part A, health, that's hospital coverage uh, for individuals who require, who a physician says needs inpatient hospital care. Um, uh, also some limited skilled nursing facility is covered and hospice care is covered under Medicare Part A. Uh, Part B is coverage, provides coverage for doctors, uh, for um, some durable medical equipment, but mostly it's doctor payments. Um, and uh, so that's A and B. Part C is now known as the Medicare Advantage Plan. And that's an alternative to having private supplemental or often known as Medigap policies to pick up the difference between what Medicare pays, that 80% of reasonable and necessary uh, expenses. Um, and Medicare Advantage provides a, a comprehensive approach. That's the claim. Uh, it includes Part A, Part B, Part D, which we haven't got to yet, but that's the drug part. So that's the easier one to remember. D is for drugs. 
Um, the Medicare Advantage plans have been advertised uh, intensively. They are supported uh, by additional funding from Congress. However, Medicare Advantage plans are all run by companies that are generally for profit. And so they provide those services on a, from their point of view, cost effective plan, often limited to certain geographic or areas. So um, Medicare Advantage is one option, otherwise it's Medicare A and B, and then part D is the drug coverage. Tell us about the scope of coverage. Well, the scope, again, it attaches to individuals who are U.S. citizens and or residents, permanent residents. Um, it does include about 20% of the individuals who are on Medicare have some disabilities. So it's possible to get Medicare under age 65. Uh, and there's also special congressional uh, privileges for people who have very life-threatening diseases such as I believe Huntington's disease and certainly end-stage renal disease is one of those that you automatically get Medicare coverage. All right. Um, Mary, and, go ahead. For Medicare advocacy, tell us about that. Oh, the Center for Medicare Advocacy, oh, wonderful support and resource for individuals with dealing with issues on Medicare. Medicare can be very confusing. Um, the organization was started by an attorney about 35 years ago, Judy Stein, out of Connecticut. They're on the East Coast. Uh, they have a great website, lots of information, lots of resources. And they have um, been very helpful for me and for a number of clients in terms of providing advocacy support for decisions that are made to, uh, to deny coverage. How do you help people you know, appeal those decisions? Mary, does Medicare pay for long-term care at skilled nursing facilities? I know that's a huge issue because uh, it's expensive. Yeah, no, generally not. And many people are not really clear on that. Uh, skilled nursing facility, uh, is the benefit is very limited. And uh, again, physician requirement, um, it, it suitable for care at a hospital and in many instances, skilled nursing care is actually custodial care. Medicare does not pay for that benefit. Um, so that's a realization that many people have. Uh, and that's why if options are available, long-term care uh, insurance is helpful. Um, alternatively, Medicaid can provide coverage for uh, skilled or custodial care in a skilled nursing facility. Mary, can someone have both Medicare and Medicaid? Yes, absolutely. Um, Medicare, if you're eligible, you've, you've either contributed yourself or a spouse or family member has made a contribution to the Social Security Administration. That is the basis or the uh, entry point for this entitlement program. Um, and so you can have Medicare. If you don't or have the ability to pay for a Medigap policy, then uh, Medicaid can pick up the differential uh, between, that's usually the 80% of what's reasonable and necessary. Uh, Medicaid can also provide services in the community for people typically under age 65. They provide support services, uh, uh, supports coordinators and things like that. So many people with disabilities who have a connection with the social security system are able to be duly qualified, receive Medicare and Medicaid benefits. Mary, how does someone move from Medicare Advantage plan to an original Medicare plan? <laughs> um, there are, this is a discussion among a number of elder law attorneys who uh, believe, and I, I, I agree that uh, there are certain enrollment periods that you can change from, and usually at the end of the year, October 7th through December 15 is the general enrollment period. Um, if you want to move from a Medicare Advantage plan where you have all of your ducks in one pot, if you will, or a row, to a classic or traditional Medicare program, uh, you need to check out the enrollment. You may also need to have 
uh, a medical qualification. Um, and the reason for that is the Medicare Advantage plan folks would like to keep you and Medicare does not want to end up picking up all of the um, people who have additional needs that the Medicare Advantage plan is not able to uh, provide for. So it can be tricky. Um, and generally the recommendation is if the individual can afford it, uh, the Medigap policy is usually the better choice for if you can, if you can swing it from a financial point of view, fee for service. Mary, tell us about the big picture regarding these plans. Wow, um, I was able to attend a seminar offered by the Center for Medicare Advocacy and I learned that uh, not only did they bring a major lawsuit that resulted in a federal lawsuit that allows Medicare to provide greater coverage for people who have chronic conditions such as Parkinson's or MS or even Alzheimer uh, diagnoses. Um, and, and that the Center for Medicare Advocacy big picture uh, made sure that the new rules and regulations for determining eligibility for payment are based on not a standard of improvement, but rather the ability to maintain function. So if the facility providing the service is able to show that the additional benefits, typically skilled therapy or, or additional therapy, uh, will enhance or maintain function, then that should be a Medicare covered advantage. I'm sorry, a Medicare covered benefit. And that is very different uh, than what it used to be. So it's another part of the advocacy here, and we want to make sure that people are aware that if a benefit has been denied, that there are options for appeal. Uh, the Center for Medicare Advocacy has a great appeal packet that they'll walk you through exactly what needs to be done and how you can do that. That's significant because certain diseases such as MS or uh, Parkinson's, uh, they're regressive and they're yeah. not going to get better. And so if you're trying to maintain some type of balance, it's important that your benefits continue. Yes, yes. And that's another, you know, another example in terms of the big picture of Medicare beneficiaries. Um, at, as of 2018, uh, approximately 40% of the individuals on Medicare were covered by Medicare Advantage plan. I expect that number is probably increased and will likely continue to increase because many people view the benefits that are provided uh, for no payment to be superior to those that they might be able to provide uh, if under their Medigap policies. Um, so only 21% in 2018 were able to pay for private Medigap coverage. Mary, what are some Medicare issues that are on the horizon for us to learn about? Okay. Um, there are a number of them. Uh, the major one, I think, is, first of all, understanding that the average person pays about a little over $6,100 annually for their medical expenses. That's a typical expense for a Medicare beneficiary, out of pocket, all right? Um, there are different amounts for Part A for the hospitalization. Uh, that average is about $1,400 annually. Uh, Medicare Advantage plan beneficiaries, while ideally healthy and at home, uh, will have a greater copay if they have a hospital stay of more than five days. Um, the big picture though, Henry, is that there has been money pumped into Medicare Advantage plans to provide, to allow them to provide a wider range of benefits. We've all heard that on television, including sometimes gym memberships and transportation to facilities and such. Uh, but that infusion of cash has not happened for traditional Medicare beneficiaries. So that's an issue that the administration is now considering. I don't believe at this point they've taken a strong position on that, but it does need to, uh, it does need to be supported because people need, have worked for Social Security, are entitled to receive Medicare benefits, and therefore they need that additional support. Classic Medicare. Mary, we are all gracefully graying. We are all aging. The alternative is worse. And what about solvency issues as Americans are aging in place? I'm sorry, was that some issues that they're about aging in place? Solvency. Okay, well, issues. some Medicare beneficiaries are lucky enough to have pretty good health. And that's, that's a blessing all by itself. Many more people have one or more 
chronic conditions or limitations in terms of not being able to provide for an activity of daily living. That would be feeding, dressing, bathing, toileting, transporting. So many Medicare beneficiaries need that type of assistance. And I, I think if you've worked enough to work to contribute to the Social Security Administration, you have an expectation for that. Uh, the Kaiser Family Foundation has a great deal of information about Medicare benefits. They do a fair amount of advocacy in that regard. What about the issue that's often raised that there's not going to be enough money to continue this as a population aid? This is true. And just this morning, we probably you probably also heard that the Medicare Part A is newly diagnosed to run out of money in a couple of years. Um, part of that is due to the pandemic. Uh, the other part of that is that the funding for Medicare Part A has not kept up with the costs. Um, additionally, a number of particularly large medical facilities uh, charge a fair amount of money and they get paid a fair amount of money. So that's a whole nother discussion in terms of competition within the healthcare industry. We could leave for another dis uh, another opportunity. <laughs> Definitely be an interesting topic. Mm -hmm. What about Medicare beneficiaries? Tell us a little bit more about that. Oh, in terms of the profile, well, as I mentioned earlier, almost 25% of them have chronic health conditions, uh, and that may be limitations on daily activities. Uh, about 20% have cognitive impairments, and that may relate also to individuals with disabilities who can become eligible for Medicare at a much younger age. Um, about 15% are under age 65, as, as I recall. Um, but the point here is that Medicare is an entitlement program. If you've contributed to the Social Security Administration, you are entitled to receive that. Uh, and the funding, however, is a matter of congressional uh, determination. As we all know, Congress makes the rules and they fund the budgets accordingly. So um, in my opinion, the uh, funding of traditional Medicare has been really left to wither in many instances. Um, and this may all be a part of, um, you know, the whole focus on privatization uh, of services that we're seeing all across our economy, Henry. Question is, where's the money going to come from to pay for all these? And what do you see in the future, Mary, with regard to the fact that there's an increase in calls for Medicare for all, there's an increase in need, yeah. as well as the fact that our population overall is aging? Yes, yes, yes. Um, I see this as a challenge that needs to be met. Um, we in America and in other uh, advanced countries are seeing an increased wave of elders. Uh, and the estimation is, I believe that, you know, by 2030, we may have as many people who are over 80 or certainly over 65 as we do who are working in the workforce. So we may be balanced at both ends in terms of people needing support services for Medicare and those who are working to contribute to the, uh, the, the workforce and, and the funding. That funding is generally current funding. So there is not a huge balance in the trust funds in that regard. Mary, how do you build a better Medicare for all those who rely on it now? And again, the fact that more and more people are going to be moving to the age range of 65 and over, where are they going to be applying? Yeah. Well, if we're going to continue providing the benefits under Medicare Advantage plans, then we need to hold them accountable and assure that they are providing the services that they advertise. Um, I think that Medicare is an entitlement program and therefore the people who've worked for it deserve that. Uh, again, this will be a matter for Congress to do. I think that the recent um, political wave toward Medicare for all does bring attention to the need for looking at this program. How could it provide? Uh, there are those who argue, and I'm not in disagreement, that Medicare is a reasonably well-administered program. I don't know that we need to change that program, but we do need to increase the funding of it and look to additional alternatives and options to provide that type of care. Uh, we're seeing some of that with telehealth these days, for example. What are some of the suggestions that you have as an expert in this field for our viewers and 
you know, if you could start writing bills or doing things, what would you recommend? Oh, for the policy? Oh, my. Uh, again, um, look at the coverage, the importance of supporting the ability of those who've worked for a number of years to receive Medicare. Again, it may, may mean increased funding for this program. Um, know, number two, know that um, Medicare does not generally provide any or much coverage for skilled care in a nursing facility. And so the alternatives are either individual resources or potentially Medicaid eligibility. Both of those come with significant costs. Um, I can tell you that the average care cost is for an individual 24 seven living in their own facility or their own apartment can run, run comfortably over $200,000 a year. Again, that's a nursing home, that's a support services arrangement, but still um, Medicare does provide that benefit. A number of employers have continued to provide Medicare-like benefits uh, in, the, in terms of uh, additional coverage for their retirees. I think that should definitely be encouraged and supported as a matter of federal public policy. Um, Michigan is one of the a number of states that has expanded Medicaid eligibility. So there are alternatives there to coordinate Medicare and Medicaid eligibility, I believe. Um, but the bottom line is we all need to know where, uh, where, is, the, where is the program what do we need to know in order to make our lives work as best as possible and for those that we love and we want to make sure are supported as well? And how do you get this information? Uh, good question. There are a number of resources. Again, I would refer initially to the Center for Medicare Advocacy. Uh, in the local area, there is a uh, Birmingham Bloomfield Senior Center, which again has been closed through most of the pandemic, but they have uh, volunteer uh, counselors there to help individuals determine which plan, which coverage, which Medigap will work best for them based on what their health needs are, their prescription drug coverage, et cetera. Uh, there is a, an area, uh, the, a, <laughs> the other AAA, the Area Agency on Aging, which is also a great resource. Um, again, they're also working mostly remote, but they have the ability, they also have counselors who can help individuals, appointments can be made, and, uh, and you can kind of help walk through your picture vis-a-vis -vis the Medicare options. Is there any humor that you can share with us as we, go, <laughs> you know, rather weighty topic? Well, Henry, I actually I do, and and I had to say this to the end because we've talked about all the Medicare options, and we know the A and the B and the C and the D, right? Uh -huh. So the question that I have for you is now. If Moses were here on this planet today, what kind of a Medicare option do you think he would pick? Any any thoughts? I'm not sure that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, the answer is Medicare Part C because Moses divided the C, so. Again, we all have to remember, um, this is a lot of complicated stuff, but in the big picture, you know, we have to keep our sense of humor about the whole thing. So we draw on Moses for a little inspiration and humor this morning. Mary, are there any other issues that we should be considering? Because, you know, I know I have to look up every year, I consider, do I change, do I stay, what companies, and it, it's mind boggling. It is. It absolutely is. Uh, and again, that's why I suggest there are counselors available from the Area Agency on Aging 1B. You can probably put the website up on your website. Um, the uh, Senior Center has options. So many advocacy groups. I, I also know the AARP does have a Michigan chapter that's reasonably active and there's some additional supports that are available for people helping to decode or, you know, Pass, figure out what the path, best path is for them in that regard. Before we sign off, will you give us some takeaways, five or so, just kind of summarizing what we've been covering? I know we've covered a lot of ground, but- We have covered a lot of ground. Okay, so a, a couple of suggestions. One, knowing that there is 
um, a difference between Medicare, again, the government's taking care of you, and Medicaid, which is based on the financial aid. So a lot of people get that mixed up, and I, I hope that's an easy way for people to understand what the differences are, and they are significant. Um, I don't know why they name them so close in, uh, in terms of the words, but that's the picture. Um, the second thing I think we need to know is that our Medicare system as we know it now does need improvement. It does need support, pri primarily financial support. Um, another thing I would repeat that uh, do not assume that skilled care is a benefit that will be paid for by Medicare if an individual uh, that you know or yourself would require um, nursing home care, skilled nursing home care. Um, and that you're, you're eligible for these Medicare benefits, your spouse and children may also be eligible for Medicare benefits. So this can be a wider range of options than just simply individual. Um, and that bottom line is we all need to know what the options we have available, how we can help each other get the best result possible. This is such an important topic. Um, I want to thank you so much for being our guest on Gracefully Green. Of course, we're going to have you back. And I want to thank our viewers for watching Gracefully Green. And please look up this video on our YouTube channel and also share and like it and also visit and share and like our Gracefully Green site. Again, Mary, I want to thank you so much for being our guest. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank our viewers for watching Gracefully Green. Thanks for having me, Henry. It's a pleasure. It's always a pleasure having you. Thank you. Take care.